Joined by the Shadow Trade and Tourism Minister, Kevin Hogan. One, well, let's just start there. Those ghost flights, it's an interesting story, uh, Kevin. You know, we're trying to boost tourism here in Australia, but you've got these ghost flights running and capacity needs to be increased when it comes to, you know, international guests and international flights. What have you made of that fiasco? Yeah, look, a bizarre decision, Pete, by the government not to allow more competition. Qatar applied for 28 more flights a week. Um, that, that would lower, that would increase competition, lower prices, get more foreign tourists back into Australia, with which Graham just said we're not even close to where we were pre-pandemic. So for them to not allow those extra flights, for them to not allow that extra competition and lower prices for tourists is bizarre. There's no, yeah. been no rationale for it, no explanation for it. So, so it's a just, really disappointing It's decision. just the hold that the big airlines have got here, the power that they have? Well, look, I think they're the questions that have to be asked, right? I mean, obviously, the big winner out of this, if you like, is Qantas. And, um, you know, I'm sure they're happy that Qatar haven't got those extra flights. So, But, look, the Minister's never really explained why she didn't allow those extra slots into Australia. As we said, more competition, lower prices, good for Australians, good for foreign tourism, good for our tourism market. So, look, it's a disappointing decision and really one that hasn't been explained by the okay. government. OK. Well, uh, on our tourism market, you've got the groups. Uh, I was talking to Graham about this uh, as well. The groups from China are now allowed in. Uh, your thoughts on that? Oh, look, great news. Um, the Chinese pre-COVID were spending about over $10 billion a year of our, our international tourism dollars every year in Australia. That was one in four dollars was coming from the Chinese market. So it's an important market. As Graham just said, they are gr group travel is a popular way that they do that. So that's good news. Follows up on the Bali um, issue this week too. We're getting Bali back into China. That was came from a W. WTO process that we began in government. So good mm. news on the tourism front and the Bali front this week. OK, uh, and just finally, uh, I just want to get your thoughts on the dispensing rules going forward. Uh, there had been concerns uh, from your Nationals counterparts yesterday. David Little, proud when I was talking to him, had some concerns about what this would mean for regional areas. Um, you know, your electorates in a regional area. Uh, so we're pushing ahead with these new rules. Uh, had the fear been overblown when it came to to pharmacies being shut down in regional areas, or are you still concerned that that's going to be the case? No, Pete, the fear's not overblown. I speak to all my pharmacies in my area, and the ones that would shut down would be the really small ones. I mean, the chemist warehouse, your price lines, when you walk into those pharmacies, they have a lot of sources of revenue. It hurts them, but they would survive. But, yeah. you know, I've got pharmacies, that the pharmacies there with one staff member, you know, and they don't have big storefronts. They will shut or they will really um, wind back their hours. Or the other thing they're going to do, and this has come out this week too, Webster packs, you know, that's when pharmacies put tablets day by day and they plan it out so the customer yeah. comes in and they just don't have to open everything up. That's cost that's costly for the pharmacists. They're now saying they won't be able to do that, some of them. Um, nursing homes are now saying that the pharmacists who used to do that won't do it. So putting out the cost of that for your residents and aged care facilities. So look, we all want cheaper medicines, yeah. but the government has not thought that, this Was through. that an overreach, though? I mean, speaking of, um, you know, thinking through, is that an overreach? I mean, I, I, I spoke at length about this this week, about charging for those, West, um, those, uh, those packs that you were just talking about then, charging those in aged care homes. I mean, that is... That's that's a big call. Yeah, well, it's time consuming. I mean, the, someone obviously has to do that. Um, and now the pharmacies don't have as much income or their income's been slashed. They yeah. don't have the staff or won't have the time or the staff to do that. So the charge has got to be passed on. So, look, the government's idea of doing this to cut medicine, I mean, cost to pharmacies is good or to, to medicines is good, but they've done it in a way that they're passing it all on to the pharmacist and the little ones can't afford it um, or services like Webster Packs will have to be cut back. So someone pays for this um, and we don't think the government's really thought it through. Well, there has to be compensation, especially to the smaller pharmacies and the, you know, the rural and remote areas or otherwise pharmacies will shut and in some places too Pete the pharmacy is the only primary health care provider there the doctors aren't there the pharmacy is the only person they're providing yep. these type of services so that would be devastating for all right, those Kevin. type of communities